Hey y'all, my name is Priscilla and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my TBR for the Book Riot Read Harder Challenge. I mentioned this in my wrap up video. This is a bookish challenging reading 24 tasks prompts that I like to challenge myself to do every year. I've actually already started on some of these challenges so it's going to be exciting for me to see how many I can get done this year. So this is of course my tentative TBR. I do try to commit to all these books, but I do also rely heavily on my library. So of course, if they don't have it available or if I request it and they don't purchase it in time, I'm not going to necessarily go out and buy them. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first prompt is an epistolary novel or collection of letters, and I have chosen to read 84 Charing Cross Road by Helen Humph. This is a classic bookish relationship between a book a seller in London and a writer in New York City. The next prompt is an alternate history novel and I've chosen to read River of Teeth by Sarah Gailey. This is a Tor novella, there's actually two in the duology, that follows a sort of group of cowboys that ride hippos in Louisiana swamps. And this is an envisioned future that could have happened if the United States had actually brought a bunch of hippos in to breed and use for meat, but that didn't work out. So there's just a rampant amount of hippos in Louisiana swamps. Book number three is a book by a woman and or author of color that has won a literary award in 2018. And I chose to read The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. Okay, and spoiler, I already read this one too for Black History Month. And this was an epic fantasy about a world where people exist called Origines that have thermal kinetic seismic abilities. And it's a story about oppression and about societal structures and dismantling them and it was pretty good but anyway the next prompt is a humor book and i've decided to read meaty by samantha irby this is a fat queer black woman writing essays about uh, pop culture and about being a black fat queer woman living in the midwest i read samantha irby's other essay collection and i thought it was pretty good and pretty funny so I thought this was a good selection for a humor book. The next prompt is a book by a journalist and or about journalism. And I've decided to read Stranger by Jorge Ramos. This is a book that I got as a gift last year that I need to get to. And it's from an Emmy award winning journalist who has worked on Univision for many, many years, many, many decades. And it's a story that was inspired by him being thrown out of a press conference for then candidate Trump in 2016 for the election. It's about, it's about being an immigrant in the United States right now, so I need to read that. The next prompt is a book by an author of color set in or about space, and I've decided to read the Genesis series, Xenogenesis Lilith's Brood by Octavia Butler. So this is a science fiction a trilogy that follows an alien's race that has abducted this black woman and has put her to sleep and she wakes up one day and she finds out that they actually want to breed with her and somehow they believe that this is going to save the human race and save the world and i think that this book touches a lot on bodily autonomy and women's rights and i'm excited to read it prop number eight is an own voices book set in mexico or central america and of course, I've decided to use Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is one of my anticipated reads, so it works perfectly for this prompt because Silvia Moreno Garcia is a Mexican Canadian woman. This is her uh, fantasy novel that's going to be released in the fall, and it follows a woman and a god of death on this journey. And I don't really know much more about it, but I know the cover is beautiful and I'm excited to get to it. So the next prompt is an own voices book set in Oceana. So this is a part of the world that I haven't read much from, if anything, that I can think of, at least in my recent literature history. But I was excited to see this prompt because I can use the Swan Book by Alexis Wright. Um, this is a sci-fi that is from an indigenous author. I think it's considered a contemporary classic. So it takes place in a future that is ravaged by climate change and it envisions this world that oppresses indigenous peoples and how a lot of that oppression is very reminiscent of the past, of the present, and of course of the future. The next book is a published book 
before January 1st, 2019 with fewer than 100 reviews on Goodreads. Can't read my own handwriting. I chose to read The Pulse Between Dimensions and The Desert by Rios de la Luz. This is a short story collection from de la Luz and I really enjoyed Itza by this author. So I know she's a queer Mexican writer, a Chicana, and this story I think is going to be, this collection is supposed to have themes of childhood trauma, alienation, of disappointment, and of justification, and it possibly horror, some horror kind of stories. So I'm excited to read more from this author. Next is a translated work written by and or translated by a woman. And I've decided to read Fever Dream by Samantha Sweblin. And this is an Argentine author and this book is translated from Spanish. So this I think is described as a bizarre horror read that follows a woman in a hospital talking to a young boy. And I think most people say it reads very much like a fever dream, like the title suggests. So that's all I really know about it. The next prompt is a book of manga. And I've decided to read Saturn Apartments Volume 1. And I don't really know much about this story. It was suggested to read as a slice of life story on the Goodreads, on the Goodreads suggestion page for this Read Harder Challenge. It's supposed to be about a window cleaning service woman working on a spaceship, on a space station. And I just really wanted to read something kind of lighthearted because I still consider myself very new to manga. The next prompt is a book in which an animal or an inanimate object is a POV character. This is a super interesting prompt and I'm really glad that Jacqueline mentioned this book because it works really good with it. And that's gonna be The Lucky Galab by Tracy Sorensen. This I think is also an oceanic Australian author. And this is interesting because it's an Australian historical fiction that connects Australia to Houston. And it also has the gala is a bird native to this area in Australia that is a point of view character. I think this bird relays messages, radio messages between Apollo 11 and Houston. So it sounds pretty interesting. Prop number 13, we're over halfway done, is a book by or about someone that identifies as neurodiverse. I'm still kind of iffy on what exactly neurodiversity covers, what is under this umbrella, but I've heard a lot of people talk about Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Koram. This is a YA contemporary about a Persian teen who I've heard identifies as neurodiverse. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that whole representation entails, but it's a character driven book with some very important issues and themes highlighted. So that sounds like something I could enjoy. Um, next is a cozy mystery. And I ended up reading already Death by Dumpling by Vivian Chen. And this is part of her noodle mystery series. It's about a woman who is Chinese American returning back to her family's noodle shop. And she ends up being accused of a crime because a man dies, actually the tenant landowner dies after eating a shrimp dumpling because he's allergic to selfish. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna, that's what I already read. <laughs> the next challenge is a book of mythology or folklore. And I think I really wanna get to A Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller this year. This was, I believe, her debut that was published before Circe, and I actually really enjoyed Circe, so I wanna read more from this author. This is a retelling of Greek mythology, and it focuses on the relationship between Achilles and Patrocles. I hope I'm saying that right. The next prompt is a historical romance by an author of color. So I've decided to choose the infamous Miss Rodriguez, and this is by Lydia San Andres. This is a novella that I have been talking about and I finally got it on my Kindle, so I need to go ahead and read it this year. And this follows Graciela Rodriguez, who is a Afro-Latina living in the Caribbean. I think it's a fictional island world. She is promised to be married to another man of high society, but she doesn't want to do that. So she's trying to cause a scene in the public eye, but her mother, her aunt, don't want that for the family. So they hire Vicente to watch out for her. And of course they're gonna end up together. So the next prompt is a business book. And this is a stretch because I don't know if this is really a business book. I think this is more of like a true crime technology book, but I'm gonna count it anyway because I don't really know many business books that I would really want to read. And it's Bad Blood by John Carreyrou. So this is a super hype to true crime book that came out last year, I believe. And it follows a uh, Silicon Valley, uproar when a company came about that claimed to be able to use blood samples for a vast amount of information although the technology didn't exist and it was a complete fraud so i've heard this is really good and it's kind of written kind of and it's kind of written with these thriller like 
storytelling devices that make it really intriguing and interesting so i'm excited to get to this so the next prompt was a novel by a non-binary or trans author and i think i finally want to read something by kweka emeze this year because i've heard so many things about their writing and i think i want to start with freshwater because i know that their other book comes out in the fall called pet and it sounds like something that i've never read before and from the reviews i've heard many people think that it is a book that has a writing that is just so inventive and different that I've kind of been hesitant to get to it, but I think I want to get to it this year. So this is a debut from a Nigerian author that follows a woman named Ada who has multiple selves, who has these different entities within herself. It sounds really surreal and I know that people just glow whenever they talk about it, so I'm gonna read it this year. The next prompt is a book of nonviolent true crime. So I had a couple of options for this, but I think that I wanna go with The Dinosaur Artist, Obsession, Betrayal, and Quest for Earth's Ultimate Trophy by Paige Williams. This is a true crime novel that follows an auction in New York City for a Tyrannosaurus Rex that was stolen from Mongolia. Um, it went on sale for millions of dollars out of seemingly nowhere and got a lot of attention because where did this T-Rex come from? This huge full skeleton. And it sounds really interesting. So I think I want to read that. So the next prompt is a book written in prison. And I think that I finally want to read De Profundis by Oscar Wilde. This is a letter written from Oscar Wilde to his lover for being in prison for essentially being gay. And I absolutely love a picture of Dorian Gray and I need to read more of Oscar Wilde's work so I think this is a good time to do it. The next prompt is a comic by an LGBT plus author and I decided to read Black Panther the comic installation by Roxane Gay. So this is a series that in part follows two of the women that are a couple in the Dora Milaje. We're almost done. So the next is a children's or middle grade, not YA, that has won a diversity award since 2009. And for this, I think I'm going to choose Dreamers by Yugi Morales. This is a Latinx picture book and it's about immigrating from Mexico to the United States. The artwork looks really beautiful for this. I meant to read this last year, but didn't get to it. So I want to make sure to read it this year. The next prompt is a self-published book. I'm unsure what I'm going to read for this. I kind of want to read something that's published locally that's available at one of the independent bookstores in my city. But I do have The Summer We Got Free by Mia McKenzie on here. And that's a book that I don't know a lot about, but I've heard Njiri talk about a few times over on her channel. So I'll just make sure to link a video to that to her channel below. And the last prompt is a collection of poetry published since 2014. And for this, I think I want to read Life on Mars by Tracy K. Smith. And this is a poetry collection that I bought last year. It's by the current poet laureate. And it's just supposed to be about science fiction and space and how that relates to our world and how we live on Earth. And I've heard it's pretty good and I need to read it. I really love the cover. <clears throat> Hopefully my voice is still there because I feel like it's kind of going. I've been talking for too long. I had some technical difficulties, but it's okay because we made it. But uh, that was my Book Riot Read Harder TBR for this year. If you've read any of these books, please come talk to me in the comments below about them. I would love to hear from you. So that's all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye!